All right, I've showed you a little bit about adjusting individual materials, but I feel like we need to go back a little bit to working on the background. Maybe that's a little more important than starting right off with adjusting materials. That's okay, you can do it in whatever order you want. Here I'm just turning on the V-Ray background again, the one that rendered right out of my scene, so it's just a solid V-Ray sky, which is okay, we can use that, and maybe I will going forward but just know that you can put any sky you want in here because of this alpha channel. And let me just show you how to do that. Okay, in Photoshop I opened a sky that I had on my computer already, probably downloaded from the internet at some point. And if we just take that and drag it into, we can say yes here, drag it into our scene, we can see now it's being applied over the top of that V-Ray background. And in the Move tool, we can move it into place. Again, zoom out by dragging left and holding Z. And then if we hit Control T, and go to this corner, handle and hold down shift and scale everything hit enter and move let's go back into control T actually let's zoom out a little bit so we can see everything control T hit enter to lock that scale in move it to where we want it. I think that's okay. Right there. It's decent. These white clouds are a little distracting over here. Okay, so that sky doesn't really match what was rendered, and what was rendered as a V-Ray sky is usually pretty accurate as far as color and light goes. So let's try to match that a little better. We can go to New Adjustment Layer, Levels, We can apply it straight onto that sky. Maybe something just like that. So what I'm doing here is sliding the midpoint of the image below, making it overall brighter. This is sliding the white point, meaning the highlights are getting pushed brighter and brighter. And this would slide the black point, making the low lights darker and darker. Okay, and that's the histogram representing the graph of every pixel in our scene. So you can see here, as I put this here, that's going to be clipping off those. But it's only for the, the image below these levels. So that's really only applying to this sky. So right there, that looks okay. Maybe we'll do it just with the midpoint. But you can see that looks a little bit flat. That's probably okay, because we're going to do the overall adjustments and get some more contrast in the overall scene later on. So let's leave it right there for now. Some other things you can do with the sky. One thing I like to do is kind of add a... Almost like you have a filter on a camera. So say this was taken with a camera and it had a filter on it. Like a polarizing... Uh, say the camera had a filter on it that made it have a gradient mass coming from the top. So we'll put some something like a blue... Something that looks like a nice deep blue sky. Maybe like that. Huh, that didn't work for us because we were in a mask. Okay, try that again. Get the deep blue. Now, let's use the gradient tool right here. 
and you can see that there's different kind of gradients you can do here. You can either go from foreground color to background color, which is blue to white, or blue to transparent. Either one of these will actually work here. Let's use blue to white just for demonstration purposes. And click there and drag down. You can hold down shift to make your gradient go straight. Okay, that gives us a little gradient over the background. And then we'll just switch the blending mode of that to overlay. I'll show you what that does. I take that back, it does matter that there is the white in there because on overlay it's actually brightening things. Let's change that so that it's going to transparent. I don't want it actually brighter at the bottom. So let's do the same thing. So you can see that's only going to add in the blue now. If I do overlay, all that's doing is darkening it near the top. Which actually that looks really good. It looks a lot like a sky. Maybe a little too purple. Of course, you can always adjust this layer, new adjustment, new saturation. Now, one trick here is to hold down Alt between these two layers, and you can see that little icon appears. And if you click there, a little arrow appears, meaning that this hue saturation layer is only affecting this gradient map. That's it, which is perfect because we don't want it to affect the sky below. So you can toy with that until it looks right. I think that's actually okay right there. Now that's only affecting the gradient map that we made because of this little arrow here. So that's a good trick that we'll use continually throughout. And this is all part of a non-destructive workflow. So it's totally normal to put in a new background and then just adjust it a lot in order to make it fit in with your scene. And that's what we've done here.